The day that many have been waiting for has finally arrived. Rad Power Bikes has released their newest version of one of their most popular e-bikes, the new Rad Runner, the 3 Plus. The 3 Plus has been completely redesigned with a ton of changes, including a new frame, battery, brakes, seat, and display. Although, as with most updates, the price has been upgraded as well. But is the 3 Plus worth the added cost to upgrade, or should you still go with the older runner instead? Let's dive into this latest iteration of Rad's Jack of All Trades e-bike, the Rad Runner 3 Plus. But before I begin, I'd like to ask that you please give this video a like and consider subscribing to my channel. And maybe leave a comment below letting everyone know what you think of this new Rad Runner. It would be most appreciated. Thank you! Okay, now let's get into it. It's difficult to think of a time in the e-bike world before the Rad Runner was a thing. When Rad Power Bikes originally released the Runner 1 back in 2019, it made a huge impact on the industry. Seemingly inspired by gas-powered scooters, Rad designed a moped-styled e-bike capable of being an everyday work commuter, grocery hauler, as well as a two-person transporter, all on the same e-bike. It wasn't the first utility e-bike of its kind, but it certainly made it popular mostly due to its low cost, as well as the numerous accessories and add-ons that would equip the bike to easily fill a variety of roles. It quickly became one of Rad's most popular models, even outselling their flagship e-bike that had become synonymous with the Rad brand, the Rad Rover. The Rad Runner also inspired a wave of similar styled imitations from many other competing e-bike manufacturers. Though despite its popularity, the Rad Runner 1 had its faults. Mainly that the bike had no suspension, it was single speed, it was equipped with a very basic LED display, and everyone's most common complaint, it had an extremely uncomfortable seat. In 2020, Rad released a limited edition plus version of the Rad Runner with a bunch of upgrades and changes that addressed some of the original runner's shortcomings. The Runner Plus came with a 7-gear drivetrain, front suspension fork, LCD display screen, a new paint job, and it came with their passenger package that included the rear seat, foot pegs, and wheel guards. It was originally intended to be available for a limited time, but proved to be so popular that Rad decided to keep it as one of their regular models. Now, almost three years later, Rad is releasing their latest version of the Rad Runner Plus, the Rad Runner 3 Plus. While it shares a similar overall shape as the original Rad Runner, the frame has been completely tweaked and redesigned. The down tube has been straightened, and there is extra reinforcement added to join the front half to the back end of the bike. Despite the redesigned frame, the Rad Runner 3 Plus and the original Plus share similar overall lengths and wheelbase measurements, an inch or less difference between the two. And while the redesigned frame looks to have less space for the step through area, the standover height itself is relatively unchanged only gaining about half an inch on the new 3 Plus over the original. So as expected, the recommended height range remains the same. 4 foot 11 to 6 foot 2 for both bikes. The weight of the bikes are similar as well, with the original Plus being just a pound and a half heavier over the new 3 Plus. Rad lists the same cargo capacity for the integrated rear rack on both bikes, 120 pounds max for each. However, it seems that the redesign to the frame has upped the total cargo capacity on the new version. Rad indicates that the 3 Plus has a capacity of 350 pounds total versus the original Runner Plus of only 300 pounds. So even more hauling and cargo capacity on this new version, which for a utility e-bike is definitely welcomed. The original Runner Plus only came in a metallic silver paint color and brown faux leather grips and seat. Rad originally released the new 3 Plus with only a charcoal color option. However, a moss green option was later released that contains a reflective coating that boosts night visibility. To no surprise, the stats on the motor of the new Runner Plus are the same as the old one. Rad strictly adheres to the Class 2, 20 miles per hour, and 750 watt nominal and peak motor classifications on all of their US bikes. So while I was hoping that they would eventually break free of this firm Class 2 limitation, I'm not surprised that they are still limiting the 3 Plus to this standard. Rad also continues to not list the torque ratings on the motors of their new models which I find a bit irritating. However, they did make note that this new motor has 10% more hill climbing ability, which to me means 10% more torque. Rad still does list the motor torque on the original Runner Plus as 80 Newton meters. So if we were to add 10% to this, we can assume that this new motor has around 88 Newton meters of torque, but no actual numbers have been given. The battery on this new model has undergone a complete redesign and relocation. Rad has moved the battery from where it was originally located on their past runners, behind the seat tube, to be now located on the bike's down tube. The style of the battery has been changed from their older external version to the same semi-integrated batteries that Rad uses on their Rad Rover 6 Plus and Rad City 5 Plus models. These newer batteries fit halfway into the bike's frame, hence the name semi-integrated batteries. 
They also come with a more accurate LED charge indicator built in, which shows 10 different levels of the battery's charge instead of the more simplified four level charge meter on the previous model's batteries. Unfortunately though, despite the design change, there hasn't been any capacity added to the new batteries. The 3 Plus and the original Runner Plus still share the same 48 volt 14 amp hours or 672 watt hour capacity. I do wish that RAD would have added more capacity to the battery on the 3 Plus since 20 amp hour batteries on the utility e-bikes are fairly commonplace these days. But instead, for the first time ever, RAD is going to provide the option to add a second battery for double the range. This optional second battery will be available sometime in the future, allowing the ability to attach another battery to the area just under the bike's rear rack. This second battery upgrade is still in the development phase, so we haven't been given an ETA on when that will be available or what it'll cost as of yet. The amount of range that the Runner 3 Plus will get you out of the box will be about the same as previous generations. Both bikes show a range listed of 45 plus miles on pedal assist. With the optional second battery, your max range should be more than double and Rad says 100 plus miles with both. However, as always, I try to stipulate that these distances that e-bike manufacturers provide are simply estimations, and the actual mileage that you'll get will vary and more than likely be less. Both the old and new Runner Pluses have the same gearing setup, a 7-speed Shimano drivetrain with a 48-tooth chainring in the front and 11-34-tooth freewheel in the rear. No changes there. However, the braking system on the 3 Plus has received a major upgrade when compared to the older model. Both bikes come with the standard 180mm brake rotors, but while the original Runner Plus comes with Tektro mechanical brakes, the new 3 Plus now comes with Tektro hydraulic brakes instead. I'm really glad that Rad decided to go with hydraulic brakes on this new runner, especially ones from a quality brand such as Tektro. The mechanical brakes on the original Runner Plus got the job done, but most would agree that mechanical brakes really shouldn't come on an e-bike considered to be premium. Another major change to the 3 Plus is the addition of Rad's updated dual screen user interface. This dual display setup has been available on the Rad Rover 6 Plus and Rad City 5 Plus e-bikes for a while now. The old LCD display found on the original Rad Runner Plus is quite dated at this point, so I'm glad that Rad has finally started to phase it out. This new display shows most of your basic readouts on the main screen, like your current speed, mileage, and motor watt usage, while the oversized remote on the left handlebar grip shows the current battery level and pedal assist setting. I've used this display a bit while on test rides, and personally, I'm not the biggest fan, but it does get the job done. The seat on the Runner 3 Plus has undergone a complete redesign as well. The saddle that came on the Runner 1 and in turn was added to the Runner Plus is almost infamous for how terribly uncomfortable it was. It was one of the few things that Rad changed about the Rad Runner 1 when they released the Rad Runner 2, where they added just a bit more padding, but it was still the same overall design. This new seat has been revamped to be more ergonomic, and unlike the old seat, uses the standard 7mm rail system so it can actually be adjusted, while it's still able to be lowered to fit seamlessly with the bike's rear passenger seat. Speaking of which, the removal of the rear passenger seat is one of the more notable downgrades on this new runner. Previously, the passenger package was available as a separate add-on to the base model Rad Runner, but the Rad Runner Plus came with the rear passenger seat, foot pegs, and wheel guard already included right on the box. However, on the 3 Plus, this is now available as a separate purchase, and Rad is selling this as an upgrade option on their site for $129. So now, if you want to carry a passenger on the back of the bike, you'll have to buy the seat separately. Hello! I like money! What inspired you to require a separate purchase for something that was previously included? Money! <laughs> Both the front and rear lights saw changes as well. The original Runner Plus came with the upgraded premium headlight that was larger and brighter than their typical headlight. The new 3 Plus is now coming with Rad's standard headlight instead. I wasn't a fan of the premium headlight, so no big loss in my opinion, but it's still a downgrade nonetheless. The rear taillight has also undergone a change as well. The original Runner Plus had a taillight positioned under the bike's rear rack, but this of course would have interfered with the future placement of the optional second battery on the new 3 Plus, so it's been moved to be integrated onto the rear fender. Another component that is present, but just slightly changed, are the front forks. The new 3 Plus still has a front suspension fork, however, it appears that the travel on these new front forks have been dialed down to 60mm of travel instead of the 80mm found on the previous Red Runner Plus, so a little less suspension bounce on this new model. Some of the standard components that haven't seen any changes and are pretty much identical to the previous Runner Plus include the tires. Rad still has their 20 by 33 inch Kenda tires that have a hybrid checkered pattern as well as the standard plastic fenders to protect you from the elements while riding. 
the same high-rise BMX-styled handlebars that can be found on both models, in addition to the typical right-hand half-grip twist throttle that is standard on all RAD e-bikes. That's the basic component rundown and changes that have been made to this new Runner 3 Plus, but one thing that has seen a big change from the Runner Plus is the price. Like I mentioned before, the original Rad Runner Plus was released about three years ago, and it has seen a steady climb in its purchase price over the years. Its current price on Rad's site is listed at $19.99, which was one of the more expensive e-bikes in Rad's lineup. The new Rad Runner 3 Plus was originally released on March 1st at $24.99, which drew a lot of criticism from Rad customers, saying that the price was just a bit too high. Yeah, I was wondering how much something like this went for. Get the fuck out of here! No, I cannot, it's serious! So a week after its initial release, Rad decided to drop the 3 Plus $200 lower to $22.99, which to me is still a bit high for the type of components that you get on this bike, but I think it's much more reasonable. When I speak of pricing, I try to factor in all the hidden costs that may go into the purchase. On the 3 Plus, I would have to include the cost of the rear passenger seat, which previously came with the old Runner Plus at no cost. Also, if you were a fan of the premium headlight that came on the original Runner Plus, you would need to purchase this item separately as well. Rad offers these headlights separately on their site, so I have to pick one up for an additional $50. Personally, I don't think the premium headlight is worth the cost, but I've seen a few people prefer it over the standard headlight, so it's up to you. One add-on that I wouldn't call a necessity, but it's a nice option if you're looking for a bit more on-bike storage, is the center console. The console for this new runner has an updated design that seems to be a bit smaller in size than the older version, which really wasn't a crazy amount of storage room to begin with, but this new one looks to be a bit more rigid and sturdy and is now able to be locked, something that the older console was sorely lacking. This new center console will run you another $130 as well. So in the end, do I recommend the Runner 3 Plus over the original Runner Plus? Yes. I know a lot of people prefer the retro look of the older Red Runner frame, but I personally like the new frame design and it definitely looks more sleek and modern. On its own, the Red Runner 3 Plus is a great looking e-bike with decent stats. Not amazing, but decent. Rad has refreshed almost all of the bike's core components, and the saddle has been completely replaced with a much more comfortable seat. However, many of the components of this new Runner 3 Plus were updated, but not necessarily upgraded. Both bikes have the same motor wattages, sure they say 10% more hill climb ability, but if you don't have the courage to actually list the motor torque specs, I'm not giving you credit for it. They also share the same battery capacities, same pedal drivetrains, and while the display is certainly different, it hasn't been hugely improved. Not to mention that the headlight and forks have been technically downgraded compared to the previous version, and the passenger package has been removed entirely, forcing you to buy it separately. One major upgrade that I can say was vastly superior on this new 3 Plus over the old is the hydraulic brakes. As far as the battery goes though, while I do appreciate the fact that Rad will provide a secondary battery upgrade option down the road, this shouldn't be a way to compensate for the bike coming with an undersized battery out of the box, and I would have been much happier with it simply coming with a bigger battery to begin with. All in all though, if I had to choose between the original Runner Plus and the 3 Plus without any extra add-ons or upgrades done to either bike, I'd have to go with the 3 Plus. I prefer the updated modern design of the new frame, and I think hydraulic brakes are a must-have component on any e-bike. It's still a tough choice for me though. But tell me what you guys think of this new Rad Runner 3 Plus. Do you feel that it's worth the extra cost? Or if you have the original Runner Plus, are you considering upgrading to the new model? Let me know down in the comments. Just to be clear, I'm not getting paid by Rad for this review, and I haven't been given a Runner 3 Plus to make it. I do have my new Rad Power Bikes affiliate code available though. If you plan on purchasing a Runner 3 Plus or any other Rad e-bike, using this code helps me make more videos like this one, so it will be in the description down below. I do hope that this video was informative and maybe help you decide which Rad Runner was right for you. If you enjoyed it, please give it a like and consider subscribing to have more of my videos sent your way. But otherwise, I thank you for watching and hope that you keep riding.